Well, new Russia re uh, revelations are now out. The Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman Lindsey Graham releasing a new batch of documents and transcripts related to the origins of the Trump-Russia probe. Senator Graham ripping into the investigation as what he claims is, quote, one of the most incompetent and corrupt operations in the history of the FBI and DOJ, the senator says. But you know, officials have long defended their actions as completely proper. Despite that, Senator Graham says, quote, I consider the crossfire hurricane investigation a massive system failure by Senate uh, senior leadership, but not representative of the dedicated, hardworking patriots who protect our nation every day at the Federal Bureau of Investigation and the Department of Justice. So what did we learn? Chris Bedford, senior editor at The Federalist, joins us now with more on that. So, Chris, what do you think is the critical takeaway from what Senator Graham released this week? So we had some ideas that some of the supervisors who are in this, as we've, we've had ideas, we've had a lot of evidence that they were very political in their motivation. We had the, uh, we had the his senior officer, who was basically the reason why this agent left the task force, saying that he didn't want to actually try to validate the Steele dossier, he didn't want to go into it, uh, pre-step. And we had Peter Strzok shooting down any kind of review. So the, the whole problem here is that there's been, there was a review and spying on an incoming administration that had already won the election to try and, uh, to try and frame them using documents, the Steele dossier, opposition research, which wasn't very reliable at all. It was a bunch of rumors, it was third party, it was innuendo, it was things that had been passed through. So this agent had resigned from the task force, said he wanted to leave it because he was so concerned, that this agent that Lindsey Graham interviewed, so concerned that there was no validation here. And when he asked for validation, he said, we need to get some human sources here to look through this steel dossier before we move forward, he was turned down on that. Now, they said that the reason for that is that they didn't want anything to leak. Sure, that kind of makes sense, but if you're going after the president of the incoming president of the United States with a counterintelligence investigation, you need to be really careful, and it shows it was political. And the person who shot him down, we have notes that have already been revealed a few months ago where he asks in his notes, what are we doing here? Are we trying to get, for example, General Flynn to tell the truth and admit to something, or are we just trying to catch him in a lie so we can prosecute him and he can be fired? Mm -hmm. It makes me think that this was very political from the start. Yeah, let me read uh, something from the actual transcript that was released, one of the transcripts of an interview with the head of counterintelligence for the FBI, uh, who says that they did think it was political. They just didn't know where the Steele dossier, who paid for it. And here's, here's the quote. Ready? Question. This is a senator asking. Uh, it was clear that Fusion GPS was backed by Clinton supporters and senior Democrats who were supporting her. Again, you don't have any recollection of that? The answer, no. And again, my recollection leaving that meeting is that I did not know which party was behind this, and that is obviously something we needed to figure out. But it was definitely political in your mind. Question, answer, without a doubt, not even a question. So, so uh, you know, your sense, Chris, that they're seeing it's political. Now, some would say just because it may be politically based doesn't mean it's incorrect. It could be certainly true no matter where it came from. But what say you? And we deal with that in journalism all the time. People come to you who spend a lot of time doing opposition research. They're trying to dig up dirt and dig up information to, to, to hurt their opponents. They're going to come to you with a whole lot of information, and your job as a journalist is to dig through that information, figure out where it's coming from, what the, what, what the motivations are here, and to view it with a jaundiced eye and to confirm it. Now, when you're an FBI agent targeting the president-elect, that job is even more important because now you're using powers the American people have given you because we're worried about countering ter terrorism and countering foreign powers, not to investigate our own people. So when they're doing that, you have to be especially careful. Now, this agent tried to be careful and said, hold on a second, this is opposition research. Where is it coming from? It's getting worse and worse every day. And he was turned down on that for fear of leaks. This is way too important of an investigation to be worried like that. They need to be careful and airtight, and they weren't. Then again, in the FBI's defense, look, they, according to the reporting, they saw a pattern of Trump campaign officials and Trump advisors meeting with, with uh, foreign sources, some uh, who they say are foreign intelligence sources, Russians, Russian intelligence, in foreign capitals in Europe. And then you got Paul Manafort and his long history of involvement with Ukraine and the pro-Moscow uh, candidate that he advised, as well as other, that big money trail uh, that you have. So they were looking at this in the FBI headquarters, putting Manafort together, perhaps, with all these sightings that they say that they got also, and put it together and thought, wait a minute, something's going on here. Let me read you this also from what Senator Graham released. Quote, 
The Trump team received a suggestion from the Russians that the Russians had damaging information on Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton and planned to release it anonymously. That was the information that we had. You receive lead information, and you go out and you open an investigation. The question, the first possibility would have been someone in the campaign was wittingly coordinating with Russia. Answer, the first possibility is that uh, yes. So in other words, Chris, you know, what do you say to those who think, look, no matter where it came from, you know, why is this one meeting with this guy who is a Russian agent? Why is this one in London and, and meeting here? What, listen to what we're hearing from the Australians. And they're thinking that they got something here. This is not an incredibly uncommon thing to see with an incoming administration or with important people who are advising on this. For example, the Biden administration is not in power yet, but they're already signaling what they're planning to do with adversaries such as Russia and Iran on different deals. There are actually there are meetings that have been taking place. John Kerry has been meeting with people frequently. And not all of these people, not all of these actors that you meet in foreign capitals who represent adversarial governments are good actors. It's difficult to find someone who you're going to meet with when you're talking to the Russians or when you're talking to the Iranians that you can really trust. It doesn't mean that those conversations don't need to happen. Now, if, when there's smoke, there's, it's worth it to look into, to make sure that there are not compromised things going on. There were some members of the Trump campaign who appear to have had some shady dealings. But they brought a huge amount of power down on here with the FISA courts, the secret courts, to really look into this and to investigate this in a way that Americans should be worried about, which is why when this agent brought up the question of where is this information coming from and, and who is doing it, he was and he was ignored. That is, that is a worry for American Republic. And we will probably hear a lot more about this as soon as U.S. Attorney John Durham issues his full Hopefully. findings and all this. Uh, Chris Bedford from the Federalist.